Hello and good morning. Welcome to the Facts First PH Research Briefing. This research briefing happens weekly, so usually it happens on a Friday. So welcome to all of you who are joining us today for this week's research briefing from the Facts First PH initiative. So for those of you that are watching and are wondering what is Facts First PH, the hashtag Facts First PH initiative actually started early this year. This brings together hundreds of different groups, civil society groups, church groups, uh, media groups, all of them to come together to make sure that we are able to defend the facts and also spread truth, right? So we have a lot of fact checks coming around um, done by some of the media groups that are part of the Facts First PH initiative. And these are all being shared online via the initiative called Facts First PH. So if you're, watch if you're watching and you're interested to learn more about it, um, just click on the hashtag Facts First PH and you'll see um, all the different fact checks that we have been doing since early this year, especially in time for the May 9 election. So as of now, we have 17 days before the elections. And really, um, this is the, the time where we have to understand what's going on around us online because so many things are happening online. And this is really what the research briefing is all about. The research briefing is here to help us analyze the data generated through this effort for us to gain insight on the narratives and networks aimed at manipulating the public ahead of elections. So we hold these research briefings in the hopes that you'll understand and sort of figure out how to navigate this online landscape that we have. Because right now, um, it's very messy, very noisy, uh, a lot of, a lot of uh, fighting happening online. So this is really our time to to pause and reflect and understand what is really going on online. So for today's research briefing, we have um, some of my Raptor colleagues are with me today to, to join me to um, give today's research briefing. So, so uh, data shows that the myth of the Marcos Gold has existed on Facebook as early as 2011 and as the 2022 elections. Near more accounts are joining the conversation to debunk the lie. So our research briefing for today will tackle from fringe to mainstream, tracing the myth of the Marcos Gold online. So uh, with me today is one of the authors of this research. We have Pauline Makaraeg. She joined Rappler in May 2019 as a fact checker. And it was when she, she was first introduced to disinformation reporting. After debunking hundreds of dubious claims online, she then went on to become a researcher of Rappler's digital forensics team, where she tries to make sense of online trends. So welcome, Pauline. Thank you very much for joining us this morning. So si Pauline talagang... She sees it firsthand, all of the all of the disinformation going on. Diba? Na, nakita na yan ni Pauline. So parang she's like our frontliner, seeing all the things happening. And um, she's there to, to do early response by fact-checking. So thank you, Pauline, for joining us. Um, also joining us, but she will be uh, with us during the question and answer portion um, after Pauline's presentation. We also have Raptor's head of digital strategy. We have Gemma Mendoza. So Gemma is also here with us Hello. today. She, if you have any questions, you can type in the chat box for those of you joining us in Zoom. And Gemma or Pauline can be the one to um, answer those questions. So, ayan, Pauline, are you ready? <laughs> yeah. Okay. <laughs> Exciting. <laughs> okay. All right. Take it away, Pauline. Okay. Thank you so much, Happy. So I won't introduce myself now <laughs> because Happy said so much already. Um, let me just share my screen first. So for today, I will be talking about um, the story that we published earlier this month. Um, it's about the Marcos Gold myth and um, how, has that exist how that existed uh, since 20 at least as early as 2011. Um, we looked at Facebook data for this story. Um, uh, Okay, so let me start uh, by first saying, why does this matter? Why did we even write about it? So first, it's because the Marcos, uh, the myths about the Marcos Gold, there are a lot of posts about them on social media. And um, the Marcos is particularly former First Lady Imelda Marcos um, and their supporters have spread the myths to justify the wealth of their family and to an extent to convince 
the voters that another Marcos presidency will lift the Philippines out of poverty. Um, ito yung usual narratives na nakita namin when looking at the posts on Facebook. And lastly, um, it's because we noticed that the falsehoods about the supposed Marcos cold remained unchecked for years on social media. So um, let me just show you first an example of the first uh, first posts about the supposed Marcos cold. You can see here. Um, I have an example that's dated in 2011 and meron then um, in 2012. So um, yung early posts about the Marcos Gold, uh, maraming versions. Um, merong about the Yamashita Gold, merong about uh, the Taliano Gold. And then we found out na yung pinaka uh, popular among them all was the Taliano Gold. Um, so for this study, we looked at all public posts on Facebook from uh pages, accounts, and groups. So yung um, lahat ng public yung settings, um, we were able to get them. And then uh, we removed irrelevant posts from the scan kasi we look for posts that contained Mar the term Marcos Gold. Uh, so yung mga na include na in other languages, for example, we did not uh, include them anymore for this study because they're not relevant anyway. So this is what the data showed us. Um, as you can see, the myth has existed online as early as 2011, but the volume of the posts gradually grew from 2014 to 2020. So the trend is kind of similar to how Marcos fan groups and pages were created over the years. Uh, we had an earlier Raptor investigation that showed uh, that these types of groups, yung mga Marcos fan pages and groups, started to increase in 2014. Uh, this was around the time when former uh, First Lady Amelia Marcos first mentioned that she wanted her son, Bongbong, Bong, to run for president. Um, the data, as you can see, um, it was gathered until March 26, 2022. And then um, in this graph, you can also see that the volume of posts then skyrocketed in 2021. So this was around the time uh, that Bongbong Bong Marcos started uh, expressing his intent to run for the presidency and eventually when he filed his uh, candidacy for president in October. Uh, so, ano na ba yung nangyari since then? Um, in 20, 2019, Rappler published uh, its first fact check on this supposed Taliana Gold um, myth. Um, ito yung fact check namin about it. We published it on February 15, 2019. So, you can already tell na um, matagal nang nasa platform yung... Uh, yung claim, but they were only able to debunk it in 2019. Um, we talked to, us, to a historian to be able to debunk this claim. And uh, basically, ang naging proof namin uh, in order to debunk it was that there's no historical proof that uh, merong royal family na tinatawag na Taliano that ruled over a kingdom called Maharlika during pre-colonial pre Philippines. We talked to historian Xiao Chua. He's a professor at uh, De La Salle University. Um, in 2019, we also published a three-parter, a uh, three-part investigative series. Ms. Gemma uh, wrote about this. Uh, she will join me later in so the Q&A. Uh, in this series, we hinimay namin kung uh, paano ginagamit ng Marcos family and their uh, supporters yung social media in order to reclaim lahat niya, how they are rewriting history to burnish their image. And um, kung ano-ano yung mga false narrative na nakita namin sa social media, particularly on Facebook, that benefit uh, the family. But still, uh, looking at the data, uh, as you can see, patuloy pa rin na tumaas yung volume ng posts uh, about the Marcos Code. Dito sa graph na to, we uh, binilang namin kung ilan yung mga posts na merong mentions nitong particular keywords such as Taliano, Vatican, Maharlika, and Aquino. And as you can see, the most popular among them all, yung tinatawag nating Taliano Gold. We also compared yung uh, volume ng posts na nagkakontain nung keywords na yon to the posts that contained um, keywords na about debunking it. For example, fake, false, or hindi to. As you can see here, um, lagging yung, mga, yung number of posts behind the other uh, keywords up until uh, 2021. As you can see here, yung, um, itong blue yun yung mga keywords na nag-debunk nung particular uh, nung supposed Marcos Gold. And then it searched 
uh, to the second spot with the last quarter of 2021. Um, if you can remember, last quarter of 2021, ito rin yung uh, time na nag-file ng COC si Bongbong Marcos for presidency. So um, what, we, what the data showed us is that uh, Facebook pages by Marcos loyalist fringe groups played a big role in the spread of the tale of the Taliana gold. So an example of those fringe group, uh, examples of those fringe groups, um, itong tatlong nilist ako dito. In the list of the top 15 groups and pages with the most posts about the Marcos Gold, uh, tatlo yung pages na uh, mat matatawag natin fringe. So ito nga yung tatlo na yun. Um, yung characteristic nila is that they post content that combine theology and conspiracy theories to perpetuate the belief that the Taliano gold exists. So there's a, a screenshot uh, of a post from Alpha Omega World Development Marshall Program. And then, as you can see here, it was posted in 2021. So that tells us that up until uh, uh, up until today, nagpo-post pa rin sila, pinaperpetuate pa rin nila yung ganitong classic claims. Um, but the data also showed us that they have been posting about this, uh, about these claims as early as 2014. Uh, these pages also spread other claims that we have debunked na rin in the past. Um, for example, uh, she shared din nila yung mga posts that claim Philippine national hero Jose Rizal owned a White Vatican account, which contained gold down na uh, supposedly minana daw ni Ferdinand Marcos explaining uh, which uh, supposedly explains na mayaman na sila even before naging president si Ferdinand Marcos. And uh, meron din claims na nagsasabi na Rizal and Ferdinand Marcos established the World Bank. Um, both of these claims are false. We have debunked them already. Uh, but we noticed that up until now, marami pa rin gumakalat na ganitong klaseng Claims and they continue to multiply on different social media platforms over the years, uh, including Facebook, YouTube, and TikTok. So, ano na ba yung itsura ng community ng mga accounts that uh, have shared posts uh, about the supposed Marcus Gold? Um, our data scientist, uh, niran niya yung lahat ng posts na nakita sa scan namin under community detection to determine different networks of accounts. So, yung community detection, nilink niya yung mga accounts that share the same link. So, yun yung mga may lines. And then, um, communities formed when a group of accounts was found to share the same sources. So, yung communities, we characterize them by um, different colors. Um, so, the blue one is the fringe group. So, the orange one uh, is a community of fact checkers and media. The green one, is the Marcos Legacy Groups and Pages. Uh, the red one is the Marcos Duterte and Fake History Groups. And yung fairly new is the violet one, the Unit Team Supporters. So as you can see in this map, um, although the fringe group started the conversations, kita kita naman that they are now fewer compared to the other communities. Maliit na lang sila right now. So um, just to give you an idea kung ano ba yung mga uh, laman itong communities na to, um, here, are uh, some of the key representatives uh, from those communities. Uh, community one is fringe groups. So ito yung mga nakita namin na uh, pages and groups belonging in that community. Alpha Omega World Development Marshall Program. It's the same page that I showed you earlier. Uh, meron din groups uh, for uh, similar members. Um, King VM loyal, su loyal supporters. I think this is... Uh, Italiano related also. And then you can also see here, meron ding Maharlika, uh, Maharlika Believers, and again, Alpha Omega Mission. The second uh, community, it's composed of fact checkers in the media. So ito lang yung community na nagda-debunk ng uh, nung myths. Um, well, of course, uh, kasama dyan na Rappler, si former uh, Chief Justice Sereno, uh, lumabas din siya dyan because she uh, regularly posts uh, content that debunk uh, the Marcos Gold myth. Uh, Jel Santos Reyes, I think she's a TV personality. She also shares um, uh, several posts uh, debunking the myth. Meron ding page na from the defenders and um, the group Angat Buhay Lahat. Uh, the third group, yung Marcos Legacy groups and pages. So, ito yung mga groups and pages that exaggerate yung achievements na ni former uh, President Ferdinand Marcos. 
as you can see here, um, yung key representatives niya, yung PSSAT Underground Media, Blessed Be Philippines, Filipino Future, E. Marcos, and Laban Pinas. Um, what we observed here dito sa third community na to, mga recidivist pages sila, um, in the sense that um, marami na kaming na fact check from their, uh, from these pages, but I I think they're still up until the day. So even though marami na kaming na flag na content from them, uh, they can still spread uh false claims about the Marcos uh, administration. The fourth community that we found, um, we characterized it as Marcos, Duterte, and fake history groups. So ito yung, um, yung fake history groups, they typically present their content as hidden facts. I'm sure you've seen some of these. Or um, uh, history na sinasabi nila na hindi daw wala raw sa textbooks or hindi binamanggit ng media. But um, if you look at them closely, they're intended to mislead others. Um, uh, this community also contained posts supportive of their, of their respective fathers of the unity in Tandem. So the um, difference niya yung sa third community kanina, uh, more on the Marcos administration legacy talaga. But this one, um, may, kasa, uh, may kasamang supporters ng Marcos family and Duterte family. And then yung last, Yung last community that we found, we called it the Uniteam Supporters. So, ito, fairly new siya. They only started sharing posts about the Marcos Gold in October 2021. Um, again, ito yung time na um, COC filing. Um, it is slightly different from the fourth community, the Marcos Duterte and Fake History Groups, in the sense that um, yung fourth community, they have been sharing the myth as early as 2016. So, ito, bago talaga siya and mas focused siya doon sa um, mga anak ng um, presidents natin. So, itong new team supporters, as in Bong Bong and Sara Duterte, siya talaga. So, this is a um, historical map of the communities over time since 2013 up until 2022. So, um, Prior to the surge of posts in 2021, you can see that most of the posts about Marcos Gold could be attributed to the third community, uh, which is the Marcos Legacy Groups and Pages. Uh, it's composed of groups and pages sharing exaggerated achievements of the Marcos regime. So as you can see, they dominated the space um, up until 2020, 2020. And then accounts in this community um, dominated the space even after uh, Rappler and other fact-checkers uh, have done fact-checks on them. Uh, if you remember yung fact-check na Rappler, it was back in 2019. And then Verifiles also had a fact-check on uh, the Taliana Gold in 2020. But even then, sila pa rin yung, um, sila pa rin yung nag-dominate ng space. But as you can see, in 2021 and 2022, na ng pushback yung community ng fact checkers and the media mas lumaki na yung um uh, community na to the orange one uh, which gives us an idea na um mas marami ng uh, posts uh, on Facebook that debunk the claim so why did it take so long bakit um nalaman natin na 2011 pa pala yung claims on Facebook but um hinahayaan lang siya before and um yung fact checks natin next start lang ng 2019 um we talked to historians and this is what they had to say. Um, si Prof. Francisco Jaime Guillen, he's a uh, professor, assistant professor in the University of the Philippines. He said na kaya daw walang academic studies before to focus on this myth is because it doesn't affect public discourse. So it doesn't require professional attention from professional historians. But he said ngayon sobrang daming naniniwala na mamimigay nga daw ng goal yung Marna's family um, once they win. Um, he also acknowledged na medyo nagahabol uh, sila right now, yung mga historians. But he said it's because right now, it's a serious problem already uh, compared to before na they didn't think anybody would believe it. Um, we also went back to uh, Professor Xiao Chua, the historian that we talked to before in 2019 for our fact check. And he said that... Um, the reason why historians never really paid attention to this myth before is because they never thought that people will really believe it. So, medyo same sila sa ni Prof. Kia. He also said that there's always a saying, ang pumato sa ulo ay Um 
he also told me that uh, sa isip niya, you have to distinguish what are worth answering. And then he also mentioned that there is also an effect on mental health down nila, no, historians. It's, be it's because um, they also suffer attacks from the supporters, particularly si Prof. Shao, uh, na share niya before na since isa nga siya sa mga una nag-debunk na itong particular claim na to, um, isa rin siya sa mga una na na-attack ng trolls and um, Marcos supporters. So for him, uh, he had to calculate the risks and strategies um, in order to actually uh, exact words niya sa akin, in order to survive another day. So may ganong considerations din sila. That's why um, tumagal yung ganitong klaseng myth online. Um, in the part of Rappler, I think um, I wasn't the one who debunked it, but uh, my colleague then, uh, she would always share na nahihirapan niya raw silang maghanap ng historians who would talk to them in order to debunk it. Kasi parang hindi naman daw talaga uh, dapat pagtuunan niya ng pansin. Um, but right now, as you can see, marami nang um, nagjo-join ng conversation to debunk it. Kasi nga, serious problem na siya. So, ano yung naging impact ng fact-checking? Sa list ng top 10 accounts with the highest interactions na nakita namin sa scan, um, dun sa posts about the Marcos Gold since 2011, for dito, uh, yung nasa community of fact-checkers and the media. So, ito yung mga top posts na merong uh, pinakamataas na interactions overall. So, this is a post by Rappler. It's a TikTok video, but it was shared on Facebook also, um, featuring our reporter, Rambo Talabong. Um, he was debunking the uh, Marcus Gold. And then, um, yung second na pinakamataas, yung post ni former Chief Justice Sereno, um, this was discussing naman yung um, existence ng land title uh, ng mga Italiano supposedly owning the Philippines in the pre-colonial times. And then the other two, yung Kapamilya Defenders nga that I mentioned before, um, I highlighted the part where they said na uh, hindi totoo yung Marcos Gold. And then this was also shared by Jan Santos Sorelos and it also accumulated a lot of interactions on her page. Um, so that's it for me today. Um, I hope I shared enough insights. Um, if you have questions, Ms. Gemma will join me for the Q&A later. Thank you. Hello, everyone. Um, so I think that was a very, very rich discussion, though. I think what we really saw there was the how it spread and how it was really for me what struck me was that this all started in 2011 and it was parang hindi natin pinansin it was just there in the first yeah. um how i i just um i think just to explain you know the, the concept of the fringe account um what does this mean was this information so parang also seeded offline were there offline efforts to also mm -hmm. kind of spread this um rumor or myth the siguro i'm um, happy one one thing we can annoy is like there was this incident sometime after the elections when biglang may nag ano nag nagpuntahan sa uplp i think it was where they were there like a huge crowd went to upl uplb pa yun. <laughs> Pauline, I forgot. I, I think it was UPLB, but basically, um, it, they were in buses. They, there's a huge crowd. We even have a story on that. We can unearth that story. But um, that one, yes, okay. So UPLB nga daw. Um, and and what was strange about it was they were there to collect gold. So so just to just to show that there's really something going on. I mean, under the hood, na hindi natin napapansin. So there are people who believe this. And that was actually why um, when we saw that post on sa YouTube, yung isang post na nakita namin, but there were also quite a lot of posts on, on Facebook. On YouTube, uh, one, one video had over a million, I think mga a million, ano na, at the time we fact-checked it. And then nag, na, dumami pa rin siya after that. So, it was really concerning. That was really why we were very about this, uh, this particular claim. And it, it, this claim landed in the most bizarre fact checks 
uh, ano to, we, we submitted it uh, to IFC and in one of the uh, global fact ano, and it landed in the most bizarre. So talagang it's not something that you would normally think people will believe talaga but clearly um, so things like this. Now, you, you know that Flat Earth Movement is <laughs> there's a movement already of people who think that the world is flat. So So clearly we cannot in- ignore fringe fringe thoughts like fr- uh, sorry fringe fringe uh, ideas like this without uh, debunking right away parang early response yeah nipping right the idea in the bud like uh, really uh, making sure that people know that it's not true yeah i'll also add um Mm-mm. okay When I talk to Prof. Diang, um, I asked kung meron na nga bang ganito kasi we only looked at the online uh, landscape, di ba? And he said, na, for sure daw, meron na. Um, and, pero back then, purely anecdotal lang sila. So, um, hindi mo alam kung paano sila itedebang. Kasi how would you debang ka chismis? <laughs> eh, chismis nga siya. So, isa rin yun sa mga... Um, challenge, uh, yeah. Yeah, isa rin yun sa mga challenge na hinarap nila. Kaya hindi talaga nila napagtuunan ng pansin back then. I agree na parang or uh, it's fiction how do you debunk yeah. fiction diba? do you fact check mga Star Wars or Star Trek or Harry Potter <laughs> hindi naman yun pinapact check kasi yeah. <laughs> because it's fiction yeah. technically it's fiction exactly. there's a question from Jane uh, oh, yes. uh, so this is about the response of the platforms like Facebook mm-hmm. so what what is Facebook doing in response to this are there posts um, that warn Uh, users about the content that it's false information mm-hmm. have any of the accounts been taken down what has the response of social media platforms it's not a takedown kasi what what happens for for this usually is if it is rated as false uh, there's an overlay and then it will be um the the post itself will be um you know downgraded but um you know uh, fact checkers fact checkers can only see so much like um and 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 like you know uh, mark so much and to. so um i to, to my understanding the platform does try to like al- algorithmically match um yung mga ano to yung mga ratings ng fact checkers with posts out there but as Pauline has il- illustrated with the data and and Gilbert is also here he worked with us on this story um uh, on the data of the, <laughs> related to the story um there's quite a lot <laughs> I mean, uh, you rate one, but as Pauline showed, there are quite a lot na posts out there. Yeah, especially yung mga ano, mm. um, kumakalat sa ibang platforms, they also get shared on Facebook then to uh, a link. And um, yung mga bago, of course, uh, of course, when we publish the fact check, nirate namin siya um, right after we publish it. But, um, yun nga yung naging challenge sa amin as fact checkers kasi marami pa rin lumalabas even after we published it and even after we rated the original post. Ang maraming nagka-copy-paste lang nun. And uh, we don't see all of them. Um, magugulat na lang kami, marami mag email sa amin um, containing, uh, requesting for a fact check on the same claim uh, when in fact we already <laughs> fact checked it already. So, um, fact checkers do as they uh, do as much as they can in rating them pero um medyo manual kasi yung process and um uh, even though merong auto matching yung facebook right now right miss um we Eight don't we're not up. sure uh, how that uh, works out and and we must remember that um there's no similar program for youtube youtube doesn't have a rating system um and there's no uh, and then n- As in, uh, uh, also TikTok, uh, TikTok doesn't have that. So um, this has spilled over to TikTok, this myth. Right, and mobilis talaga siya mag-spread. Mm-hmm. I think my, the other question is, um, I remember the, the slide that, with the maps that you showed through time. Yung, mm-hmm. At first, maliit lang yung fringe and then eventually na-pick up siya ng mainstream. I think I'd, um, I'd like to know more about the relationship between fringe accounts and mainstream accounts. How how does it link? So paano na pick up ng mainstream yung fringe, um, or vice versa? Does does the fringe also get influenced by mainstream, or do they only parang listen to each other? You want hmm. to 
Well, merong connections as showed dun sa community map. Uh, it means that they have shared the same sources before. Um, but I think, personally, ang na-observe ko, um, kinuha ng mga mainstream supporter fan pages from the fringe groups yung idea because it benefits uh, the family that they support. Kaya nila um, in-spread yung ganong klaseng uh, myth. And uh, they... Yung mainstream, yung uh, mas malalaking pages, mas may capacity sila to spread and to propagate these kinds of false claims. Kaya uh, mas mabilis, mas rapid yung pagdami ng ganitong klaseng uh, claims online. And and don't forget, may ano to, uh, happy, there's a layer there na history pages supposedly. Ah, yeah. diba? Parang, um, so people don't, <laughs> and as you have seen, diba, there was a recent ano, about, uh, ano yun, majo, ma, majo, <laughs> yung, yung ano to na, may, medyo may, ano, may kakulangan tayo in, in histo, history, educate, in, in educating our people on history. Um, and there's, there seems to be that gap. And, and um, in effect, Uh, when there is a gap, when there's a data gap online, for instance, then then people things like this spread. So so hindi kasi na ano eh, hindi kasi na uh, nag, walang content, um, which is really why it's important to have content out there that's debunking, uh, because po oh, then nagsa surface yung mga ganitong mga fringe ideas yung ganon. So so very um and important to point out talaga as Pauline point uh, said um. They were ano eh hindi naman siya shinier lang eh they were really uploaded as well posted as well directly by these pages that fully listed na ano to yung Marco supporters and also the history pages and so far when you were scanning these have you spotted any other emerging false narratives now we think <laughs> Oh, like, <laughs> of course yung ano maraming ano so this goes into the ano the um uh, in relation to 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 like the the claims that are distorting ano history diba like uh the claims that there were no martial law abuses these are just mga panggulo ma- ma- nanggugulo lang to mga uh, ano na to when we know that's not true there were really uh, documented cases of abuse and and killings and and, and extrajudicial killings Um, there were also claims about the economy and dami na nitong na check mm. ni Pauline. <laughs> yung ano na lang eh, yung peso dollar na lang yeah. eh. like <laughs> I mean and Nutriban like parang like that like th- that claim about Nutriban is so like pervasive out there when in fact the fact that you have a US agency an external agency actually bringing in aid means there's a need there's an aid, there's a need for aid here, the diba? for food aid, the diba? and then it was projected as a good thing. Yeah. I think uh, that also happens because itong mga Marcos Legacy pages and groups natin, yung mga supporter fan pages and groups, uh, they typically, this is what I observed, they typically post uh, the Marcos Gold claims alongside other um, yes. achievements mm-hmm. claims. Um, in comparison sa fringe groups, mas focus talaga sila dun sa gold. Yeah. Yung talaga yung, <laughs> yung, talaga yung topic nila. But nung na-pick up na ito ng Marcos Legacy groups and pages, um, marami na silang sinasama na iba. Kaya nag-mix in na rin yung uh, supposed uh, achievements ng Marcos administration before. Kaya siya naging gala. And just a follow-up to that, uh, why do you think it was this myth that stuck kasi sabi mo maraming ang kumakalat. There's the economy, all these things about martial law. Pero it was this thing about gold that stuck with people. Maybe what is there? What was the psychological impact of that? Bakit yung gold, yung maharlika, yung alam mo yun prehistoric. This this idea of of a kingdom. Um, per, perhaps psychologically, why was this the narrative that stuck to people the most? Na talagang kinapita nila. So let's not forget that there was actually a time. I think I forgot if it was uh, moving into the 2016 elections or something where there was a statement that um they 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 the reason why they're running is because they want to distribute the wealth, give back the wealth. There was a ano na ganun. So so may may underlying when when something kasi go circulates um and and gains traction that's usually ano because it's connected with something na 
nangyari talaga. So parang may na, nabigyan ng credence yung ganong idea. Then the content online, the typical thing that I see is um Marcos Gold, Gold will save the world and so on. So so on the ground you have people saying okay then you'll because papamigay nila to and so on. But on online that's supported by that yung yung content na Marcos Gold will save the world. And there are quite a lot of that a lot of versions of that. So it's repetition, it's it's these underlying statements that do not debunk to begin with. Remember, let's let's not forget here the family never debunk, debunked it before. We asked. We tried to get a statement point like cause, cause they were annoying. Like if you are seeing something, you're concerned about your people, the welfare of people. Because this is being used also for by mga ano to, may mga uh mga scammers actually that, that incident in UPLB was a scam and uh if you're seeing that already and you know that your family kumbaga people are lying in your name diba and you're a concerned leader shouldn't you have publicly debunked it like made the effort to make sure that your family is not being used your family name is not being used in that way that would have been the responsible thing to do diba but that's not that didn't happen in fact when when the takedowns of some pages for for violations and and for ano to, um the press, the ano to, the leading contender sister even ano I said in a in a in a hearing na they were ano masama ang loob nila for the takedowns these are pages and assets in social media that were violating community standards. Diba? And sumama ang loob nila for that. Instead um, of policing the supporters. Yeah. But, and then a follow-up to now, uh, to that question somebody just asked in the comment box. Um, na, pero right now, during the elections, sinabi na daw ni Bongbong. And that was very recent. Oh, yeah, very Ngayon recent. lang sila nagsalita. And has that because, they're, because they are already being held to account by not just Rappler. Before this, Rappler was fake news. Okay? Uh, yun, yun lang ang sinasabi nila. Wala yan. Hindi yan. Inimbento nyo lang yan. Yung, yung ano na yan. What Pauline has illustrated here is that Hindi ito, ha, ha. hindi ito imagination ng mga fact-checkers. There are a lot of these posts online. They are posted by supporters and, and, and in a way linked to statements made by the family. And then um, there was, ngayon lang talaga sila. And in fact, our, our reporters really tried to get make an effort diba, to get a statement from them about this school. I remember Lian actually asking yeah making yeah. an effort to get them to state said say something about the gold, gold gold and what did they do um the i remember the i know the spokesperson even said they're not aware of it how can you not be aware of it like or have you been living have you been living under a rock yeah and um for for pauline um uh, another question so i think is in terms of what you're seeing, and especially you, you're you're doing fact checks on a daily basis. Um, has has it has it um, turned people? Ha, you know, do people now then okay? Do they because of the fact checks um, and the fact check groups that have emerged now? Has it been able to neutralize the myth, or is there still? A lot of work that needs to be done. I mean, I because I saw the effect, the yung nag yung naging mainstream yeah. idea na siya and then nag dominate yung narrative ng fact checkers. Is that enough to debunk the myth? Uh, for sure, maraming um, good effects yung uh, lumaking community ng fact checkers in the media. But I wouldn't say that it's enough because it still exists um, even offline. So um, that just only. Uh, says to us that there is a lot of work that needs to be done pa, um, outside of the online space. Um, for the online space, I can't say exactly kung na-neutralize siya kasi um, we still see those kinds of posts being shared um, 
right now, even though maraming nagpa-fact check, uh, marami pa rin nagsashare ng uh, original myth. Uh, but uh, I think it really helps na maraming nagde-debunk right now. Uh, just so it illustrates na uh, mas mara- na mas marami na ngayon na uh, hindi naniniwala doon and uh, may may capacity sila to convince others na uh, hindi yun totoo. Uh, I can't say for sure eh, if it's it has neutralized. It's hard to say that uh, especially uh, posts lang na may nakikita namin. I think that would warrant another study but uh, that's an interesting, interesting thought to think about. Right. And my final question, I think, um, and this is to both of you. Of course, you're you're both uh, media practitioners, journalists, and and now we really see the impact of you know uh, the distortion of history. How how easily we forget um, itong mga historical historical facts that we have believed to be true. Para ngayon, suddenly everybody is is doubtful of it. So I think, what then is the bigger challenge in terms of Um, helping people to remember and keeping real historical accounts alive. What do you think is the greatest challenge that faces you now? Colleen, muna. Sure, this is for me. Yung <laughs> talaga biggest challenge that we're still fighting right now. Um, but I think multifaceted kasi yung ano eh, yung issue. It's not just about uh, It's not just about people believing it. It's also about um, bakit ba nila pinapaniwalaan. Kaya maraming issues na kailangan i-address. But uh, right now, I think um, yung fact-checking uh, for me, uh, I think it's working. And um, marami pang kailangan gawin. Pero, pero I think I'm being optimistic here. <laughs> But um, if we continue to convince others, and um, I would, I don't want to say educate, because there are um, may mga nang sabi na parang may masamang connotation. But if you are able to convince others through facts, if you're able to defend yourself through facts, um, I think that's a good starting point, and I think we should just keep on doing that, uh, moving forward. Thank you, Pauline. Siguro, idagdag ko lang. Siguro, idagdag ko lang. Yung ano, something to keep in mind here is um, yung what what this kind of environment enables. And I think um, this goes to the point of why so many lawyers actually joined Facts First PH. At the end of the day kasi, um, this information, a landscape uh, that um, that encourages or not, does not Um, penalize or does not ano, in disinformation um, makes it difficult for rule of law to happen. To it's a it's a rule of law issue. So in effect, um, when you talk about um, the gold, de ba? What that tries to obfuscate is yung ano yung idea that the Marquesses, the money, the wealth, their wealth did not come. from the philip from ano from from ill gotten means and um and that is ano that's a rule of law issue um and 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 it makes it hard for the philippine government to then enforce yung ano yung uh, the the rulings that allow the government to go after that wealth and and well that's not just for the marcoses eventually i mean notice that there are quite a lot of these politicians helping them diba like <laughs> ano to hindi na lang si If you let the Marcoses go, you also let the others go, and then ano na to? Um, it's free for all. Then there's impunity na. So in every ano, in everything talaga, facts really are a found, the foundation kasi of rule of law, di ba? In every case na tinatry, palaging ganon may agree to. Ano yung pina, pinang, Ano yung mga facts that are undisputed? It's always like that. So kung kung hindi natin to Uh, kung hahayaan to, di ba? and people do not become involved in fact-checking, in making sure that people understand what is what are the facts and what's not, di ba? what are ano, or what are dubious claims, what are false claims, what are lies. Um, how do we even function as a society? Right. 
right? I think that's a really good um way to frame it as a rule of law issue because it's you're you're basically saying now na pwede ka na lang mag-imbento ng sarili yes. mo. Yes. Mm-hmm. Oh, kasi respect respect my opinion, 'di ba? <laughs> These are not opinions. These are uh-huh. facts. Yeah. So, I think that's that's one one thing like if we zoom out outside of the disinformation versus fact checking, it's really about who benefits from this and what yes. kind of society will we have if we allow lies to assist people in getting away with crime. And Precisely. Think, yeah, that's a big a, da- a big danger. So um, with that, <laughs> ang lungkot naman lang. <laughs> so, uh, Pero hopeful nga, sabi ni Pauline. <laughs> we have a community now. Yeah. And that's good. It's bigger now. Yeah. <laughs> So thank you, Pauline and Gemma, for your time this morning. And I think um, a lot of our uh, viewers today were able to learn a lot. And I think really, you know, revisit. Uh, I'm sure all of us know people na nandidiwala dito sa mga lives na to. So I think, you know, um, if, if you know the facts, spread it. And I think that's also one of the main reasons why Facts First PH was um, formed. So I think, Gemma, for our closing remarks of our research meeting today, <laughs> so you can tell people more about you know, Facts First PH. Well, we, we really them. invite everybody to be involved in the battle for facts. It's very important. It's, a, it, it's an existential thing. Um, societies cannot function without shared facts. Democracies cannot Uh, function without shared facts. Please join Tax First Page. Yeah. And so we also have um, tip lines. You can uh, email info at factsfirst.ph. Um, that's also happening. You can do, you can submit also false claims. So if right now you're watching and you see in your mga Facebook groups or Viber groups na meron na It's something false that's spreading, you can share it with us para we can also do the fact checks. Ayun, si Pauline ang one of those that does the fact, fact check. So that's the the face behind the the tip line. So maraming salamat, Pauline. I know what you're doing is is not easy. Being bombarded with lies every day and having to debunk all of that. Mahirap yun. So we need your help for all of you who are watching. Um, just spread spread uh, facts. We have all the content available already in Facts First PH. So just look at look through the fact checks that have already been done and share them in your own networks so that we're able to give truth a louder voice. So thank you very much again to everyone for joining us today. Thank you, Pauline and Gemma. And thank you as well to all the other people who have cross-posted these videos and streaming it live in their own social media pages. These research briefings, all, all of this will be published on Rappler, so you can watch out for that. And this story has actually been published already. So um, you can just search for, for that article if you really want to understand and go in-depth with the study that Pauline um, authored. So again, thank you very much. My name is Happy Fran, and I was the one who moderated today's research briefing. We'll see you again next week for another Facts First PH research briefing. Good morning. Morning.